how to paint with tissue paper. Boys and girls, today in class, we are going to learn how to paint with a special kind of tissue paper called bleeding tissue. But before we do that, write your name on your paper using a Sharpie, and don't forget to put your teacher's initial on the paper as well. Flip your paper over, and now let's wet the whole thing with a squirt spray bottle. Make sure every inch of that paper has wet water on it. Now the fun part. This is a special kind of tissue paper. It's called bleeding tissue paper, and I can't wait to show you what happens later. But for now, we want to place a square over the entire white piece of paper. Don't let these squares stick together. They do get a little sticky. Pull them apart to where you only have one piece on the paper, not two. Whoops, there was two. So place them one by one all over the paper. It's a nice contrast to have a warm color and a cool color be beside each other. Warm colors are yellow, red, and orange, also pinks. Cool colors are greens, blues, and purples. Look how these warm and cool colors are really coming together. If you have lots of blues, add a little red. If you have lots of greens, add a little yellow. If you have a lot of purple, put an orange beside it. Now, once all those tissues are on the paper, get the spray bottle really close to them. We don't want the tissue to fly away and start squirting the tissue onto the paper. Get it really wet. So do a lot of squirt, 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 squirting onto that tissue paper you're starting to see what's going to happen. It's going to spread color onto that paper. Don't peel that tissue paper off though, it needs to dry. I still have some white space on my paper, so I'm going to come in with a smaller square. These squares have different colors than the larger squares. I'm going to add yellows and oranges and different blues in some of those white spots that are still on the paper, and I'm going to squirt my paper one more time. Fill in all the white space and get to squirting. Once you have those papers placed on, get your squirt bottle and squirt it one more time. This is important. Don't get any of those wet, uh, those tissue papers still in the container wet because we want to use those for different projects. Pick your paper up with both hands and take it to the drying rack. You can put it on the black rack and lift it up and put one paper on each level or place it on the white drying rack. Now that our bleeding tissue is dry, we're going to use that to create a beautiful background for a colorful Zentangle leaf. Here's how we'll make it. On your table, there are several leaf templates. These are leaves that are different shapes and sizes. Pick the one that is your favorite. Place it on the part of your paper that has the color that you want to be the background for your leaf. Once you find the placement, get a little tiny piece of tape. You want to secure that leaf while you trace. Put it on the back of your leaf, roll it up, and then tape it down. Tip your paper upside down just to make sure the leaf is really on there well. You can choose to, to trace with a pencil first and then go over it with Sharpie, or you can choose to go around it with Sharpie without the pencil first. Make sure that it's on secure so that you don't move your Sharpie and make a mistake. Once you have the entire thing traced, then you will lift off the leaf. Now that you're done tracing the leaf, in the center of the leaf, you're going to draw a straight line coming down and stop before you hit that bottom stem. Up toward the top of the leaf, you want to draw a diagonal line and do it on the other side. 
go down again and draw another diagonal line and go to the other side and do it again. You need three empty spaces on one side and three empty spaces on the other. We're going to use those spaces to fill them in with a line pattern. Zentangle line patterns are going to create texture for this leaf. It won't look flat. It will have some interesting line patterns inside each space. For my first line pattern, I chose to do a line that's like a hump. And every time I build on that hump, I connect the line on top of the hump when I start the new section, if that makes sense. You don't have to use this line pattern, but this is a line pattern I have chosen. It also reminds me of scales. In the next box, I chose to do diagonal lines. You don't have to copy what I do. You can pick any pattern from the papers I have provided. You can also create your own line pattern or your own line design. So in the next section, I fill in with a zigzag line. You can do a zigzag line or you can choose another line pattern inside this section for your leaf. You can do hearts, stars, create your own design. Anything is possible and the options are limitless. You can take a look at mine on the board at the front or use ideas that you have on your paper in front of you. Have fun! Now that you're done with your Zentangle line pattern, you are ready to cut out the leaf. With one hand, hold on to the paper. That's what you'll use to turn the paper. The other hand will be the hand used for cutting. Cut a little bit away from the black line because you want to have that color poking out. So don't cut right on the black line. Give yourself some margin, a little space between the black line. So finish cutting that out all the way around and save your scrap paper. We'll use that for another project.